If you guys want to know something a little corny about me, I do uh, sign all my checks as CEO of Jangus Genetics LLC. And uh, I heard Dave Ramsey describe it the other day as chief everything officer, and I thought that was pretty good. So as a chief everything officer or CEO of my own business, because we are a business in the agricultural industry and farming, uh, it should be run as a business because it is a business. And so I was sitting down the other day trying to think about as CEO, what should my goals be for the year? What are the main profit drivers, the main things that I can do to uh, make my business more profitable? And I came up with uh, about four of them here. I want to share them with you. So the first thing that I, is more fun to me and the thing that I like to think about as, a, as an entrepreneur, real type, uh, I get excited about the future and, and creating things and doing new things. And so one of those main things is, is how do we make more, how do, how do we make what we have worth more money? So adding value, how do we add value? That's the first thing that I think, one of the most important things I think we can do in the agricultural business and our own business is how do we add value to what we're already doing? So how do I take these, uh, these cows and sell them for more money? How do I take these calves, add value to them, and sell them for more money? And so one of the ways that I've done that is I bought heifers uh, or raised heifers. We appreciate them get them in production uh, and either the ones that won't get in production we turn them into high quality grass-fed beef the ones that do get into production they they go on and we keep them until right before they're going to depreciate and now then we have to make a decision for me because i'm a breed breeding stock producer a seed stock producer i want to prove that those cows can go on and they can last a really long time and so I will keep what I call my rock star cows, my best cows, the cows that are perfect in every way. They've never missed. They've never had any problems. Always wean a good profitable calf. Um, and I expect them to do that again for, for there's no reason not to until they're you know old enough to drink um, or in their late teens. And so I'll, I will keep those core cows. The rest of them, we want to get rid of them before they depreciate. If I was just running in a commercial business and I'm doing a good job of, of uh, selecting my genetics or if I'm mob breeding, um, keeping my own genetics and always uh, improving those. Uh, and by improving those, I mean making them, selecting for animals that are more adapted to my environment, my system, my management, always doing a better job of doing that. I want to get rid of the old cows before they start to depreciate in value. Someone else can buy them. They're worth the most amount of money they're ever going to be. Uh, you know, if you're, you can also sell them as pears, uh, bred back. Uh, it's kind of the most amount of value you're going to get for them. If it's kind of the most amount of value you're going to get for them if you're not worried about losing that calf. Um, you know, or just selling them in, in P2, 1, 2, or 3 stage. You know, they're all worth different amounts of money. They're all worth different amounts of money there. Uh, you got to figure out what works for you and your system and your buyers. Uh, so uh, with the bulls, you know, if I was just selling at the sale barn or, uh, or we, well, I'll talk about my operation. With the bulls, uh, anything that's not going to meet my standards is going to get cut. We're going to turn them into high-quality grass-finished beef. Uh, we'll direct market those and sell them to our customers. If you are selling at the sale barn, you know, you, you want to have them consistent. Uh, you know, cut them, do everything that you can to get the most amount of value out of them. Um, wean them, process them, do everything that, that's going to add value on down the line. Uh, for me, the ones that are going to make bulls, we go ahead, we develop them. Uh, what we're going to do this year is we're going to develop them on grass, on forage, um, you know, that's, that's what our end goal is. We want to develop them slow, protect their feet and legs, make sure they're going to go out and last a long time, breed a lot of cows for our customers. Um, and, and so that's our goal. We'll direct market those. We'll, we'll build those relationships, provide high quality service and, uh, you know, a high quality product to our customers and they'll come back and see us again. And that's kind of my goal, my plan there on how we, we raise our value um, I'll do some more marketing, some more advertising, making sure that, uh, you know, our, our customers have the data that they want and need on those bulls to be able to pay better prices for them. Every time you add value, you can charge a little bit more. So uh, whatever that looks like for you, drive those prices up. As CEO, that is your number one job is to pr produce uh, the highest amount of return for your shareholders' investment. Uh, as the owner of the business, I'm also a shareholder. So, uh, so the second goal, I think that is super important is increasing turnover. Ranching for profit, they say there's three, there's only three ways to make more money at farming and ranching and livestock, and that is to increase your gross margins, increase your turnover, or decrease your expenses. And so, um, 
increasing turnover. What does that look like? It means that I need to be flexible and I need to make decisions to sell more volume, uh, whatever that looks like. So that's kind of a difficult thing to think about in the just a cow calf operation because you wean a calf, you sell them, you, you kind of get one calf a year and all those other things. But we've got a sheep operation. I need to be thinking about that. Um, how can I increase the, uh, you know, the conception rates I think are very important. So that's one of the number one things that my uh, production manager, also me, um, should be looking at is how do we increase, maximize, or optimize our, we want to get the most amount of conception we can and still maintain that gross margin. So you can spend whatever you want to. You could try to get 100% conception rate, but that doesn't make it profitable. Um, so my cows have to respond to my low input system, my management, the ones that don't, they need to go. And then I need to select genetics uh, replacements from the ones that are doing it um, and performing on what I want them to and what I'm providing. So uh, that's kind of a longer term goal. Look at that. But the CEO, we can do that. So um, turnover, looking at the sheep, um, you know, conception rates, uh, custom grazing, bringing on those kinds of things just to kind of increase our, our cash flow and our turnover. Cash flow, you're not going to survive without it. So super important for the CEO to keep that in the back of their mind. Uh, it affects every decision that you make affects your cash flow in one way or the other. Uh, with that, growing more grass, I think that that is one of the best thing, the biggest challenges right now for me is how do I get more pounds of beef produced on the acres that I have? Um, you know, and, I, and I'm going to spend a lot of time studying that this year. How do I, you know, can I use cover crops? Can I rent ground that is not in production for my neighbors or my dad or my grandpa? Um, can I, can I, can we uh, grow cover crops on there? Can, should I be buying, you know, a portion of grain and, and running my cows on, on Milo? Uh, when I do the numbers and I do the math and I talk to some neighbors that are doing this, I'm like, I'm looking at, you know, you can run a hundred cows for three to four months. Or I think 180 days is what I did on the math, um, you know, on 10 acres of Milo. And so something like that is very exciting and I need to study it, understand it, and we need to look at those other options. How do we increase our performance on just what we have here? I think that's the biggest thing for me right now without spending money. How can I make this ground more profitable, more productive, uh, get more pounds of beef per acre produced? And I think that the answer for that is continuing with the rotational grazing program, uh, making sure we're not overgrazing, uh, making sure we're not undergrazing and let that grass get too much rest where it, you know, it goes to seed, loses its production value. Uh, so proper management, I think, is is the biggest thing that I can do on what we've got. You know, if it, we we might, uh, if you're not worried about it, you might look at. Uh, I haven't done this, but you might. You know, I'm going to research it this year. Looking at providing, uh, you know, doing soil tests, providing some synthetic fertilizers. I think you could get a quick jump on that. I don't. You know, it's something I need to study really close because I know a lot of people say that that damages your uh, your soil infrastructure, your soil health. And the long-term benefit or the long-term uh, defects are busted up by the short-term benefits. So, uh, you know, those are those are things that we need to seek to understand. Is it going to be good for us in the long term? Is it not? Uh, you know, should we apply some lime? I think that might be a very good thing on some of my pastures back home. So, soil tests, other things like that's what I'm thinking about. How do I grow more grass per acre, or uh, produce more beef per acre, or more profit per acre? Uh, so. Yeah, the, uh, the only other thing that I had written in there is one of my big target goals was to uh, maximize my or optimize my pounds weaned per cow exposed. Uh, so with these low input type of cattle uh, or pounds per acre, you know, figure out what works for you. But uh, that, that includes those conception rates. That includes the, uh, you know, the grass management. Wanting to make sure we provide those animals with a high quality grass. Um, uh, but conception rates are huge and then keeping those making sure, making sure we do a good job of keeping those calves alive and healthy until weaning time so um, those are the those are kind of the things as a ceo of my business that i'm thinking about uh, if i missed one that's big you guys be sure to let me know i, I don't want to miss anything it's super important uh, making sure we maintain that cash flow throughout the year uh, meeting our, our all of our uh, you know our cash flow demands our target goals on profit and all those kinds of things and uh you know, just doing a good job of managing the business also in the back of my mind. But 
I think it's important for us to have some of those specific written down goals. Those uh, each in, in one of the best books, the best business books I ever read was Michael E. Gerber's The E-Myth Revisited. And uh, most of the entrepreneurs that I've studied really hard, they all talk about this book. In Knowledge Rich Ranching, they did a good job of highlighting the, uh, the important parts again. And I got to re I've read it again. Um, and kind of that's kind of where this conversation sparked from. But, you know, shareholders at the top. CEO, then you've got your marketing, finance, production, uh, vice presidents underneath there. And, and even if you're just a one man operation or a chief everything officer, you need to have an idea and a, and a plan and a target for each one of those individual positions to meet. And then, you know, it goes on down to the technician, the working guy. Um, and, and when you start to do your hiring or when you're contracting, those are the things that you, you have to meet. Uh, those are the first hires you look at, the technician, and then the technician has to meet the job of the finance or the marketing or the operations guy. You know, organizational structure is important even when you're only a one-man crew, and there's a reason that everybody you deal with at a bank is a vice president. It gives them title, it gives them authority, it gives them status, it gives them purpose, it makes them feel like part of the team, and that's what we want. We, want, we don't want to hire employees. That's why they call, don't call them employees anymore. We want to hire team members to help us grow our business and run our business, and don't forget agriculture, farming, ranching. It is a business. We are here to, yes, do a good job, regenerate the world, uh, grow high quality beef, but we are also here to make a profit for our shareholders. Otherwise, we're not going to get to be here any longer. If we can't make our payments and be excited to be here, we're not going to get our kids back involved. We're not going to want to stay here. We could be doing something else in town, making more money and investing that in the stock market in our retirement fund, right? So we have to be able to make a living. We have to be excited about it. And uh, that's one of the best things about business is it helps everybody involved. So uh, if you guys like this content, like, subscribe, follow for more. If I forgot something that I, is really important, leave that in the comments down below. We appreciate you guys.